Hello everybody, here we are back in the workshop, um, picking back up where we left off on the uh, SIG 4 Star 40 SIG coverall videos. Okay, I said that we were going to be a little bit different this time, and uh, part of it being due to I was chastised for my videos being just way too long. So what we're going to do, we're going to do segments, and since we're, we're covering with fabric and dope there are a lot of cure times involved so what we'll do we'll do a step and that'll be the video and we'll continue the next video with the next step like we're gonna this video i'm going to show you how to seal and what we have to worry about and what we don't have to worry about with the fuselage now um the last video i said i was going to add some stringers and i did and i also sealed the gap Okay, those gaps that were there in my triangle stock. And what I used to fill that, I know I looked for it and looked kind of dumb, but this is what I used to seal those gaps. It's just drywall patch. Uh, you can get it at Walmart, I think it's like three or four dollars. It's not, it's actually less than that, I think. But uh, that's what I used to. Uh, Fill the gaps and then you come back you let it dry completely usually takes about a day and then sand it down and it's as smooth as a baby's butt crack i guess you can say you can see right there i went all the way around it and just sealed everything off now just for just for uh aesthetic reasons and just for reassurance i went ahead and sanded the whole model <clears throat> just went over it one more time just to make sure uh, whenever you strip a model down, let's say you, you're going to do this to your favorite R for a uh, kit you got at a swap meet or something. This is an opportunity to inspect your airplane, the wood, the quality of the wood that's underneath. Make any kind of repairs or anything that needs to be done. Which, you know, this is a brand new model, hasn't flown yet. Uh, this is the kit that we built in uh, a series a couple years ago. And I covered it with solar tax. The paint job went to shit on it. Ryan was gun shy of the airplane this is his airplane that he's going to be flying um so we're redoing the entire thing we're going to do uh fabric and dope and now we are ready to seal the airplane now two things that you're going to need this is an empty can you're going to need butyrate and make sure you get the non tottening butyrate and it's non-tottening butyrate clear, part number A-1690. You can go to aircraftspruce.com and you can get this, okay? So you're going to need that. Um, you don't have to buy a gallon, but I suggest you do. Uh, that way you have more than not enough. You can get it in quart size if you need to as well. And you're also going to need butyrate thinner. That's uh, part number 9703 from Aircraft Spruce. Um, you're going to shit when you see the price tags, but it's okay. I never said this was cheap. Um, what we're going to do after we get our two chemicals, we're going to make up some sealer. I just use a mason jar. 50% butyrate, 50% thinner, okay? Your measurements don't have to be exact, but I like to try to use a mixing cup, or uh, not a mixing cup, but a measuring cup. Um, I've got a two-stroke uh, uh, vial that I use to get my measurements right. I try to get them right on as I can, but anyway, you're going to need 50-50 for this process. You're going to need a paintbrush. I went to Walmart and got some of these fine paint brushes that comes in a kit, and they got really wide. All the way down to really fine this is just a medium size so we're going to need one of these and to clean that i've just got an old can here where i screwed up and bought tottening butyrate um i used that on another thing i was just experimenting with i just you grab that and poured some thinner in there to clean my brush you're going to need some paper towels and also i can't stress how important it is to do this in a ventilated area I know I said I was probably going to spray this. I changed my mind. We're going to brush it on because it's just a sealer coat. Um, we just Our main objective here is to seal the wood. The finish is going to come after we put the fabric on and we layer the sealer. I will spray that on there. 
But uh, anyhow, I've got the model ready to go. I've dusted it. After you get done sanding it, you want to clean all the dust off of it. And what you do is just get you some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel or even a terry cloth, something that's lint free. And wet your rag and wipe the whole thing down. That pulls all the dust off the wood, okay, from sanding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the sides and the top of the model and the vertical and horizontal stabilizer. I'm not going to worry about the bottom because in order to do the bottom, we got to flip it over. It's going to be wet. Well, I may be able to on this table. Uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But the things we want to worry about covering with sealer are solid pieces of wood, okay? Which really on this model, it's going to be the whole thing. The only thing I'm not going to worry about is our stringers, okay? There's nothing we can do about that. It's not going to absorb that much uh, butyrate when we go to spray the coverall when we're done or when we're at that point. So I'm going to get my clear. This has been mixed up for a while under my sealer. I'll just give her a good shake. The door is open and this stuff is quite odiferous. So, I mean, this is, this is the real deal stuff that they use on real airplanes, so some that don't want that to get in your mix it's just some where it's sealed all right and then you just paint it on um, I suggest two coats we're gonna paint it on and we're gonna let it dry for 24 hours then I'm gonna come back and do it again I'm not gonna make you watch that I'm just gonna video this first coat that way I don't know the camera may not do it justice because this is clear you have to see it in person to how your wood absorbs this stuff, okay? But we'll paint this, we'll get this uh, sealed, and then I'm going to come back tomorrow off camera and put a second coat on there. And then after that, we can apply or sticks it. Um, but anyway, let's get to work. So we'll go ahead and dip that. Um, I don't know how, just kind of bullshit here while we work um i really do thank you guys for sticking with me uh, through this I've, I've been through some shit uh not a divorce or anything like that i am lucky i'm still married <laughs> um one thing i did um as as i stated in a previous video i suffer from a host of things uh ptsd depression um, anxiety, paranoid anxiety, and I mean, we're talking about like off the charts, how I suffer from this stuff, and one thing I refuse, now see, this is issues going back 25 years ago, um, I was in a position that was stressful, it's actually a part of my life I do not talk about. Um, I did work for the government and I was in very stressful situations and I had to do things I didn't like to do. I was away from home six months to a year at a time, not even on the continent. And, uh, it was just a bad situation. I got out. And, of course, like most people, uh, it led to a divorce, custody battle, all that good stuff. And a child that wasn't mine, that I was getting blamed for. You know, it's kind of like the guy that uh, finally got home after 10 years of being gone and he met his six-year-old daughter. You know, it was one of them kind of situations. But... I had all these issues I was dealing with, and I refused to get medicated for it. I said, I can deal with this. Fuck, I'm a man. Oh, pardon my French. I'm just kind of speaking at, at will here um, and letting you guys in on kind of what's been going on. And, oh, jeez. Um, these issues kept getting worse, harder to deal with, harder to bottle up, 
eventually, you know, when you ball up all these feelings, and you stuff them down deep inside, it does things to you. And, I mean, I can't explain it. Um, I don't care to explain it. Um, all I can say is it's not the way to deal with things. And, you know, I used to drink a lot. And I quit. Because what kind of asshole dad stays drunk and uh, raises his kids that way? I didn't see that was the way to do things. Now, I mean, I say I quit drinking. I, I really did for a long time. But say like we're at a social function, you know, and there there's a beer or two. I may have a drink or two then. But it's not like I used to be, uh, get off work, get a 12-pack, and it had to be gone before the day was over. It's not that. We're not doing that. We're not playing that game. So, uh, all right, we got all that side there. When I quit doing that, that's when I really started having problems, um, dealing with stuff, handling stress and things really went downhill and then you throw this COVID stuff on top of it the isolation which really being by myself I kind of prefer but also prefer you know shit I want to go to town and socialize take my family somewhere go do stuff and can't do that Fortunately, my job did not shut down during all that. And uh, I realized there was a problem. And I made that one video. I, I locked it out to where not God and country can see it anymore because I'm better now. But <laughs> sought counseling. That helped. Talk to my doctor about medication because I couldn't live like that anymore. And holy smokes, we went through a host of medicines. Um, some were pretty powerful and made me do weird shit. Um, I didn't have a filter before. I really lost it on some of these. Now, I'm not going to go into what they were. But... Uh, I think it actually cost me some friendships. And I'm really sorry that it did because I really looked up to some of these people, but you know, my filter went away and I mean, I don't want to say it was my fault. It wasn't my fault. It was my fault. I said the things I said. And yes, I regret saying those things. And, uh, I think those friendships are gone now, and it sucks. But, anyhow, it took some time. I mean, we're almost a year into this medication. Oh, yeah, when I almost died, <laughs> my leg you know, went stupid. Um, that caused some mental issues as well. Um, I went septic, and there was some brain damage that came with that. I didn't realize it at the time, but shit, I couldn't remember nothing. We're getting better. But, uh, anyhow, here we are now. We're better, we're back. Um, I'm finding joy in the things I used to like to do, where before I just kind of lost interest in everything. All I wanted. I didn't even want to go to work, and I enjoy what I do for work. I'm a machinist. I like making things, if you couldn't tell. And uh, that's coming back, okay? And I'm down to having to take nine pills a day now, not like it was before. I think that was an was the uh-oh from before was being over-medicated. Um, 
we didn't have a whole lot of softball tournaments this summer and fortunately I didn't get thrown out of any of those because that would have been bad my wife coaches and all that wonderful stuff all right so I got that side now see this stuff always dries fast and before you lay it down you at least want to make sure it's dry to the touch so you know lay it over gently if you want to throw a uh, towel down or something you can but when I go to hit the second coat I'm gonna rough it up with some uh, steel wool double lot steel wool but a couple friends um, got a buddy from Canada I didn't know this he comes down in the summer and flies with us he saw that video and it really hit home with him because he struggled with the exact same thing. I mean, to a T. Me and him are rowing the same boat. And he does a buddy check-in. I GY6, I got your six. And he calls and we bullshit. And you know, if anything, we laugh. And that is 110%. The medicine that fixes, you know, I mean, through that, we fix each other. Used to have a buddy that called all the time, and I really enjoyed those conversations, but I think I fucked that one up just through my medicine I was taking and losing my filter. Um, stuff I thought was funny really wasn't, you know, in hindsight, being 2020. It's, it wasn't funny. No, I'm, I'm fixed. I get well. I'm, I guess I'll always be broken, but we got it under control now. And uh, guess you could say during that little hiatus, I had to find me again. I didn't even hardly fly out at the field at all this year because I just didn't want to be around nobody. Uh, part of it, everybody gives everybody a hard time. You know, it's just a part of a. A friendship I couldn't take that I mean I'd get pissed off you know and I mean you know some of the things that said were kind of mean and it just you know it escalates but you know they don't know what the that next guy what he's going through what he's putting up with and they didn't know so it's not like I could really jump their ass about it but uh, you know I keep my distance me and Ryan flew here at the house mostly um, I went to their events I went to their fun flies after all I'm kind of the contest director and I got to insure everything and I enjoyed doing that I really do but uh, I'm getting better Excuse me, the music that's playing in the background. I can't play the radio because YouTube will block the video if the wrong song comes on. So I got to play royalty free stuff and it's not exactly a 80s hit rock radio that is playing all the time. So I know this is off camera, I see that now, but I'm just getting all the solid wood components back here. All the stabilizers, all that good stuff. I know it's probably like watching me do this is like watching paint dry. All right. I mean, it, this is how quick it goes. Um... Not that big of a deal. Just you got to be patient. Patient is 99.9% .9 of everything. So now I'm going to get the bottom of the fuselage. And see this wood, you know, it's all kiln dried. 
before it goes to SIG and then they cut the kits or it goes to their contractor to cut the kits. And it's got a, they got a certain moisture content that it's got to hold, but it's, it's pretty damn dry. Okay. That's why it really soaks this stuff up. And the reason we seal, oh shit. Things happen. But like I say, I'm going to hit it with uh, steel wool before we put the second coat on. The reason we're doing this now, let's say we didn't, and we went ahead and did our sticks it and we put our fabric on, and then we start shooting our sealer, or our fabric sealer, which is mixed a little bit different, onto the fabric, the wood would actually pull it through the fabric and into the wood. So, I mean, you wouldn't be doing your fabric any justice. So, really, it's just like we're priming the wood to take the fabric. All right. All right, well, that's that. I mean, the whole fuselage is done. First coat. We'll do uh, another coat. I'll do that off camera tomorrow about the same time. And then I'll let that dry for 24 hours. And then once that's good and dry, I'll go over it off camera. I'm using that thinner to uh, clean my brush. Um, I'll kind of go over it with uh, some steel wool, the whole thing, get it all nice and smooth. And then we'll do the, the sticks it video on what you want to do there. Another one, Again, that'll be kind of a short video. I'll show you how to mix it. And get everything lined up. And we'll use a little bit different brush for that. You don't have to, but I do. Uh, because the sticks it can ruin a brush. So I just use those cheap acid brushes. Um, they work really good. Because all you're wanting to do is put it down to where you're going to iron your fabric on. Um, we're going to thin it down so it's not like bulky or leaves a super shiny finish. Um, it can, and it'll also bleed onto your iron and cause headaches there. I mean, it, it can be a real nightmare if you don't thin it out. And plus, it just lasts, goes further. So, uh, that's step one after you make sure your fuselage is ready to go. And like I say, I'll coat it again tomorrow off camera. Um, I want to try to keep my videos under an hour. Uh, there'll be a bunch of 15, 20 minute videos because, well, I mean, you don't want to sit here and just watch me pick my nose while I do stuff. Kind of like this, it's redundant to watch me get put another coat on there, but I do want you to know, at least want to put two coats on there. If it don't feel right, don't be shy, put a third. You're just preventing that wood from soaking that uh, butyrate through the fabric and into the wood. Okay, it's it'll, it'll save you a headache. So, well, that's step one. That's all we're going to do today. Uh, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button if this is your first time uh, watching any of this. Um, if this is your first video you've seen from our channel, go back and check some of the other build videos. Uh, Ryan's hat, Ryan Godfrey, he's plum happy with the PT-20 that we did. Uh, a lot of people have actually uh, wrote emails uh, about the PT-20 build. It helped them get along and get their start in building model model aircraft. Um, just feeling lots of love. Of course, with everything, uh, there are going to be people that hate you. I don't have any words for them except for I'm sorry. Um, if you paid too, if you feel like you paid too much to watch this video, I'll be more than happy to double your refund, which is zero dollars. Um, I just hope you enjoy it. Um, it is educational, and I, I try to add some fun to it. Um, but uh, if you have any questions, be sure to point in the dibbly doo down below, and we'll uh, answer them as soon as we can. And I really appreciate, again, all the positive uh, feedback I've been getting uh, during my little hiatus here. Um, it's, it's actually helped me. It helps me. Since I'm so isolated here in the mountains, it helps me knowing that there are people that actually do care. Um, I couldn't say nothing to hurt their feelings, and it's helped me a lot. 
but we're on the mend. I'm looking for a really cool build season. We're going to do this. Ryan has a uh, Fokker DR1 from Balsa USA that Joe Vermillion sent to him. He's wanting to do the structure on. Uh, so we're going to do that this winter as well. And I also have a Lanier RC uh, pits. Uh, well, ultimate pits. A little bit of pits, a whole lot of ultimate biplane that I'm wanting to build as well. So we're going to be bubble gumming around those three airplanes. This one, Ryan's DR1, and the uh, pits as well. We're modifying that pits a little bit to look a little bit different. Um, it's something I started several years ago, and I, I told my wife, I said, I need to get this done. We need to finish this airplane, and I've lost the plane, so i got to find those. And then we'll get to work with that, all right? Well, hey, again, make sure you like and subscribe to see more future content on this. And thanks for watching, guys.